In this lesson, we will learn how to calculate weighted averages, and we will learn some general properties of weighted averages. To set this up, consider the following. Let's say we have six men, and their average age is 20, and we have six women, and their average age is 40. Now what happens if we combine these two groups? What will be the average age of the combined population? Well, if you said 30, you're right. To see why, let's find the sum of the ages of the men and the sum of the ages of the women. To do this, we will use the following formula. So since the average age of the men is 20, and there are 6 men altogether, the sum of their ages will be 20 times 6, which is 120. When we apply the same formula to the population of women, we see that the sum of their ages is 240. Now let's see what happens when we combine both populations. The average age of these 12 people will be the sum of all 12 ages divided by 12. So the sum of the men's ages is 120, and the sum of the women's ages is 240. We will now divide this by 12. When we simplify this, we get an average of 30. Notice that the average age of the combined population is equal to the average of the average ages of the two original groups. Okay, now let's take the original question and change it slightly. Let's keep the average ages of the men and women at 20 and 40 respectively, but let's remove four of the men. Now, if we combine the two groups, what will be the average age of the combined population? To determine this, let's take the two original groups and find the sum of their ages. Once again, we will apply this formula. For the men, the average age is 20, and there are now two men, so the sum of their ages will be 20 times 2, which is 40. When we apply the same formula to the women, we see that the sum of their ages is 240. Now, when we combine the two groups, the average age of the eight people will be the sum of all eight ages divided by eight. The men's ages add to 40, and the women's ages add to 240, so the average age of the combined population is 35. Notice that this time, the average age of the combined population is not the same as the average of the average ages of the two original groups. Okay, now let's look at a different way to find the average age of the combined population. To do this, we need to recognize that the average age of the entire population depends on the proportion of men in the group and the proportion of women in the group. Now, in this population of eight people, we have two men. So the men comprise two-eighths of the combined population. At this point, we'll take this fraction and multiply it by the average age of the male population, which is 20. Now to this calculation, we will add the contribution of the female population. So in the combined group of eight people, we have six women. So the women comprise six-eighths of the combined population. We will now multiply this by the average age of the female population, which is 40. Now when we simplify this, we see that the average age of the combined population is still 35. We can now take these results and generalize them as follows. If we are combining two or more groups where we know the average of each individual group, then to find the weighted average of the combined population, we will take the proportional representation of one group, say group A, and multiply it by the average of that group. Then we will do the same for another group, and so on. Okay, now let's apply this formula to the following question. Here we have three classes of Calculus 101. Class A has 20 students, Class B has 30 students, and Class C has 50 students. We are given the average test scores for each class, and we want to determine the average score for all three classes combined. Since there is a different number of students in each class, we can use the weighted average formula. So first, let's determine the total number of students in the combined population. When we add the populations of each class, we get a total population of 100. So to find the average score for all three classes combined, we will begin with Class A. Class A has 20 students, and there are 100 students in the entire population, so Class A represents 20 one-hundredths of the population. 
we will multiply this by the average score in class A, which is 90. Now on to class B. Of the 100 students in the combined population, 30 of them are in class B. So class B represents 30 one hundredths of the population, which we will multiply by 82, the average score in class B. Finally, class C represents 50 one hundredths of the population, and the average score in that class is 66. When we simplify all of this, we see that the average score for all three classes combined is 75.6. Okay, that's how we calculate weighted averages. Now let's look at some properties of weighted averages. To set this up, let's go back to the results of some earlier examples. In the first example, we began with six men and six women. The average ages of each group are 20 and 40. When we combine these two groups, the average age of the combined population is 30, which happens to be the average of 20 and 40. In the next example, we removed four men from this group and then combined the two groups. At this point, the population of women is greater than the population of men. As such, the average age of the women carries more weight which means the average age of the combined population changes when it slides over to the heavier population and becomes 35. Similarly, notice what happens when we remove two women from this population. In this scenario, the population of men now outweighs the population of women. So as a result, the average age of the combined population slides over to the heavier population and changes to 28. We can summarize these results as follows. To set this up, let's say that group A has some average measurement A and group B has some average measurement B. Now, when we combine these two groups, the average of the combined group will depend on which group has the greatest population. This gives us three cases to consider. Case one is that the population of group A equals the population of group B. If this is the case, then the average of the combined group will be equal to the average of the averages of the two individual groups. Case 2 is that the population of group A is greater than the population of group B. If this is the case, then the average of the combined group will be closer to average A than it is to average B. Finally, case 3 is that the population of group B is greater than the population of group A. If this is the case, then the average of the combined group will be closer to average B than it is to average A. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned how to calculate weighted averages, and we learned three properties of weighted averages.